The platform fighter is an incredibly fun game genre, but still consists of few titles. Warner Bros. Games decided to change that with the launch of Multiverses, a platform fighter featuring characters from a number of famous franchises, most notably the ones in WB Stable. So, how does this game fare? Well, I played it in order to find out. Prepare yourselves. Multiverses is a free-to-play game, so it's no surprise that when starting up, you're asked to create a Warner Games account. When I did, it generated an automatic name that wasn't to my liking, so I changed it. But the game still used that auto-generated handle. After a break between plays, I found out the matter was easily resolved. However, if you want your name changed to be applied, just restart the game. We don't play this kind of game for the story, but there's still some effort put into one. Apparently, you have to deal with dimensional rifts that beings from other universes use to enter yours. Incursions, if you will. Your mission is simple. Knock them back to their reality. It's a simple story which is exactly what a game like this needs. The writers also obviously had some fun with it, noticeable in things like Harley Quinn cringing over an alternate version of herself who's still devoted to the Joker, or Bugs Bunny explaining he works for the Clown Prince of Crime because he's a Big Shot sponsor. I don't think you want to know where that cash comes from, Bugs. The game starts off with a clever tutorial that teaches you right off the bat the important controls you need to know. As I stated, Warner threw in everything, including the kitchen sink, when it comes to the character roster. Unfortunately, you start off with a very limited selection. You can pick between a handful of characters, including Shaggy and Steven Universe, but heavy hitters like Superman or the Iron Giant need to be either unlocked or purchased. I don't mind it all that much. The base game is free, after all. Shaggy is the most balanced of the original selectable characters, slowly getting stronger, and I always found myself coming back to him as a choice. You can upgrade your character with a series of gems that provide different boosts. You can also equip your partner with gems that have passive effects, meaning they boost your stats as well. Kind of like the Synergist class in Final Fantasy XIII. Unfortunately, the character roster sometimes favors quantity over quality. Much like Space Jam 2, there are some strange choices. After a few missions, I unlocked Tom and Jerry. The battle I picked them for had me pitted against Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. The image of two characters from a wacky cartoon series fighting an R-rated assassin just illustrates the strange contrast. A lot of these characters are voiced by their popular respective voice actors, such as Joker being voiced by Mark Hamill, or Jake the Dog voiced by John DiMaggio, and of course, the late and great Kevin Conroy as Batman. That's a lot of cash thrown at a free game, but again, this feels yet again like getting priorities wrong, as the funds could have been put into making the game look more impressive. It's not just characters Warner pulls from their library, but stages as well. Most of them are recognizable or are linked to a popular character which in turn makes them feel instantly familiar. So how does the game play? Well, comparisons to Smash Brothers are inevitable. As a matter of fact, Multiverses is available on a variety of platforms except the Switch. Either Nintendo didn't allow them to publish on the platform, or Warner thought going up against Smash Bros on their home turf would be suicide. And there's a kernel of truth there. Compared to Smash Bros, Multiverses lacks a wow factor. The gameplay doesn't pack as much of a punch, and the animations could definitely have been smoother. The weird thing about it is, they pulled the game out of beta, retooled it, and then released it a year later, but it somehow came out worse. It was slower, many of the ranged attacks were removed, you have to get real close, I mean real close, to opponents to land a hit. As gorgeous as the maps are, they're just like the characters you start off with, in short supply. And what's going to frustrate you the most is the way to unlock new characters. If you don't want to pay, you can grind away. But it's tedious. For example, 
if you want to unlock Joker, you have to play for 77 hours. That's almost as much time as it takes to finish Final Fantasy 13. In case you haven't realized, I really like Final Fantasy 13. Multiverses has the potential to be a Smash Bros killer, especially since it could appeal to players outside of Nintendo's demographic. It's also free as opposed to Smash Bros Ultimate's $60 price tag, but its true strength lies in the fact that it doesn't need to dethrone anyone. The game is pretty solid and fun on its own. It just requires a little patience, patience that might be rewarded with a much more impressive game if the developers take the right steps. All in all, I'll reward Multiverses 3 out of 5 Thunderbolts. It's a game worth checking out, and you've literally got nothing to lose by getting it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.